Hello everyone and welcome back to Miss Wales Tales. I'm your storyteller, Miss Whale, and today, with the help of some neighbours and my family, and of course, the illustration fairy, we're going to tell you a tale. Did you watch my video, It's Not Fair, A COVID-19 Birthday? In that story, Rashmi says that she doesn't know why Hadlow Tower was built. Well, in this video, I'm going to share with you the story of Hadlow Tower. If you've seen Hadlow Tower in real life before, give this video a like. And if you're new here, please subscribe to my channel as it's completely free, but it does help us out. Now, the story begins in the 1700s, so I think I'd better get into a better outfit. Oh, there we are. That's better. So, let's begin. In the 1760s, a family of four were living in a place called Hadlow Court Lodge. Spoiler alert, this was to become the location of Hadlow Castle and Hadlow Tower, but not yet. They were John Barton and Jane May, and their two sons, Walter and another John. Loads of people in this story have the same names and it's really confusing. One day, Walter's Uncle Richard said, If you take my surname when I die, I'll leave you a very large inheritance. Walter did not need very long to think about this, and he agreed. He'd happily exchange his surname for vast riches. In 1763, Uncle Richard died and left his nephew his money, so that Walter Barton became Walter May. In 1786, Walter's father also died and left him Hadlow Court Lodge. He may also have been making a lot of money from hop farming, which Hadlow is also famous for, but that's a story for another day. Finally, he got married to a woman called Elizabeth Stanford of Peckham. And she was wealthy too. Excellent! Walter had a house and plenty of money. So what did he do? He tore the house down to make a bigger one, of course. But not a regular house. Oh no. Walter wanted to build a castle. And that's exactly what he did, although it did take 60 years to finish. His architect was called Mr J Dugdale, who doesn't seem to have been an expert as we don't know anything about him. However, he does have one claim to fame, and that is that he suggested the name for Trafalgar Square in London. Walter wanted his castle in the Gothic style, which doesn't mean that he wanted the castle wearing eyeliner and black lipstick. It means he wanted it covered in arches, stained glass windows, and lots of engraved flowers. We think he may have been inspired by Strawberry Hill House in London. What do you think? Do they look similar? But at this point, it was still a castle without a tower. The castle had 11 bedrooms so that Walter could have lots of people to stay and show off to them all and a long gallery lined with Greek statues, classical plasterwork on the ceiling, and Corinthian columns. So, the outside of the castle was Gothic style, and the inside was classical style. In other words, they didn't match. Some people definitely wouldn't have minded this because it was all so impressive, but there certainly would have been others who would have said that Walter was demonstrating a lack of intellectual purity. Meanwhile, in 1783, Elizabeth and Walter May had a son, and they called him Walter Barton May. So let's call him Young Walter so that we don't get confused. Young Walter grew up with the castle being built around him, so he developed an interest in architecture too, like his dad. However, he had to wait until he was 49 before he could start building things himself. Be 
basically, he needed his relatives to die so that he could inherit their money. Also like his dad, young Walter married a nice rich lady, Mary Susanna Porter. So finally, in 1832, Hadlow Tower started to be built. Hooray! Young Walter chose a proper professional architect, George Ledwell Taylor. Young Walter wanted the tower to be durable, like Chatham Dockyard, and stylish, like the streets in Paddington, and parts of Hyde Park, and Trafalgar Square, all of which were designed by Mr Taylor. He wanted it to be the tallest folly in the UK, even taller than Nelson's Column, and he wanted it... He wanted it to be octagonal. Octagonal? Won't it be really difficult to find furniture to fit in the rooms? Octagonal! The big question is, why did Walter build the tower? Was it to show off how rich he was? Well, maybe, but he didn't actually choose a very expensive method of building. The tower looks like it's made of stone, but really it's brick, rendered or covered in Roman cement. That's the way to build something, to look super fancy, but is actually really cheap. Was it a flamboyant status symbol? Young Walter did achieve this goal, and the tower is the tallest folly, that means a tower without any kind of purpose, in the UK, about five feet taller than Nelson's Column. Or, gossip, young Walter's marriage broke down around the time that he started the whole project and Mary moved back to her parents' place, which was called Fish Hall. Did Walter build the tower so that he could spy on her? Or maybe, if she started seeing someone else, he built it so that she'd have to say, Oh, my ex-husband! He's the one who built that gigantic tower over there. This is why some people call Hadlow Tower May's Folly, because it's thanks to Walter May's insecurities that we have such a fantastic landmark. The story ends with Walter Barton May's son, who he called... Walter. This one was Walter Horatio May, but we'll call him Very Young Walter. Very Young Walter did not share his father and his grandfather's passion for architecture and put the whole estate up for sale. He lived in Brighton and then in Essex, but he couldn't escape Hadlow in the end and is buried in St Mary's Churchyard. Lots of exciting things happened to the tower over the decades, it was used as a lookout post in World War II. And unfortunately, in 1951, people started demolishing the castle to use the building materials. Luckily, a local painter, Bernard Hailstone, stepped in to buy the tower, lodges, entrance arch and service courtyard, which are all the pieces we have left today. Phew! Hailstone was a local he went to the Judd School in Tunbridge, and there's a road named after him in Hadlow. So it's exciting that he was such a famous man. He painted Winston Churchill, Prince Charles, and the Queen. And he's been on a radio programme called Desert Island Discs, and in my opinion, that's how you know when someone is really famous. The Great Storm of 1987 could have been the end of Hadlow Tower, as it was very damaged. But a committee called the Save Hadlow Tower Action Group was formed and they made sure that the tower was repaired and given the love it deserved. That placard you can see there is actually the original I used to protest. And here's a picture of me which appeared in the local paper. Luckily, since all that drama, Hadlow Tower has been restored to its former glory and you can see it shining like a golden beacon for miles around. And that is the end of the tale. I wonder what might happen to Hadlow Tower in the next 200 years. What do you think?
I hope you all enjoyed hearing the story of Hadlow Tower. Make sure you share this video with anyone who you think might not know the history of our wonderful tower. Let me know in the comments if there's anything you'd like to hear the story of next and I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye!